Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on understanding the SSSE version 5.6 to 6.0 transition, the key concepts and implementation strategies. I'm Aprajita Singh, a marketing executive representing BSI India. We are delighted to have you all join us today as we delve into essential concepts and strategies for implementing FSSC version 6, the latest version on food safety system management uh, certification. As the food industry evolves, it is crucial for organization to stay updated with the latest standard and best practices to ensure food safety, quality, and compliance. The version 6 brings uh, significant changes and businesses that embrace to achieve excellence in food safety systems. To guide us through this uh, transition, we have two distinguished speakers who are experts in their respective fields. Firstly, I am pleased to introduce Ms. Smita Murthy, uh, the India representative for FSSE. She has extensive working experience in the fields of quality and food safety, having worked for, in, for a leading food safety and uh, beverage company, the Coca-Cola company for over 20 years. She holds a master degree in microbiology and spent over a decade um, auditing manufacturing units globally for quality, food safety, environment, and occupational safety standards. She also leads analytical service in India for the Global Beverages MNC. She joined FSSE team in August 2019 as a local Indian representative. Now let's welcome our second speaker, Mr. Ramesh Krishna, the head of food safety uh, the food sector at BSI India. He is food safety and occupational safety and a health practitioner, a postgraduate uh, post in microbiology and a Nibosh um, diploma holder in occupational, occupational safety and health with over two decades of experience implement, in implementing quality occupational health and safety environment and food safety systems, providing training, consultation and auditing management systems uh, for firms in India as well as in the Middle East. I would like to extend our gratitude to both of uh, to both our esteemed speakers uh, for sharing their expertise with us today. Before we start with the webinar, I would like to lay some ground rules for our audience. You have joined the webinar in listen-only mode, and but you are welcome to ask as many questions throughout the webinar using the question box. We will answer the question in the Q&A round at the end, and we, if we don't get to any, we will be uh, they, we will be answering their, them after the webinar. We will be sharing the recording with you, and I would like to encourage all of our participants in the upcoming polls to have your say, and please bear with us if there are any technical difficulties. We will fix those as soon as we can. So let's get started. Over to you, Smita. Uh, thank you. I hope my voice is clear to everyone. Yes, it is. Okay. And I also hope you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, so, uh, very good afternoon to everyone. And um, it's uh, really nice to be here for this webinar on the version 6. And thank you, BSI, for uh, inviting me to do this. Uh, so let's get started quickly. I know you'll have a lot of questions on why these versions keep changing and why every year almost we are at a new version. So I'll try and answer those questions and uh, let's just get through it. Uh, so just a brief, a couple of brief things we'll talk about today. I think all of you know what FSSC is. So uh, I'll just do a very brief introduction to our organization, to version 6. We'll talk in depth about why things have changed. What are the benefits of these changes uh, and how do you upgrade to version 6 from uh, the certificate that you have right now? Uh, so, Aparajita, can we run the first poll question, please? Sure, Smita. So, uh, I would request our attendees to look for the poll question number one, which is, How familiar are you with the changes introduced in FSSE version 6? Please opt one of the following uh, answers. Very familiar, 
somewhat familiar or not familiar at all. Can we have the results now? Yes, Nata, you can see we have 14% says that we are very familiar, 47% say somewhat familiar, and 39% not familiar at all. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I will try and take this slowly and answer as many questions as possible, but this is not a full-fledged training program, and we'll talk about those training programs later on. So at least I hope to give you an overview of what's happening with FSCC today. Um, before we talk about what has changed in FSCC, why do you think we need FSCC? So just answering a few of those questions on why look at FSCC as the certification for your food safety system, for if you're a food company, what are the benefits of having FSCC? So as those who are few who already have some understanding on FSCC, we are the only GFSI approved uh, food safety system which is based on an ISO standard. So as you know, for, uh, GFSI is the Global Food Safety Initiative and there are several schemes which are uh, certified or which are approved by GFSI. And for example, there's BRC, there's SQF, there is IFS. So there are all these global systems which are also uh, accepted and recognized by GFSI. However, FSSC 22000 is the only one that is based on an ISO standard. And the benefits of it being based on ISO standards are uh, quite a bit because one, you know the standards really well. It's internationally developed, accepted everywhere. Um, so you have 135 countries contributing to the ISO standard. So it's already uh, you know, well designed and well understood. Uh, because it's based on ISO, it's very easy to integrate it with other ISO standards. So if you have environment, safety, all these standards, they can very easily be integrated with FSSC 22000 as it's the same harmonized structure that we use. And of course, it covers the entire supply chain. Um, ISO 22000 is not GFSI recognized, but FSSC 22000 is. Okay, so those are some of the reasons why you need to look at FSSC. Of course, um, we are now 32,000 odd uh, certificates worldwide and still counting. Uh, we have a team of um, in the representatives across the globe like me. And um, like I said, it's based on ISO. So it's fully applied ISO 22000. So if you already are ISO 22000, it's very easy for you to move into FSSC. Uh, there are sector spe specific prerequisite programs. These are the absolute foundational programs that uh, any food sector has to do, for example, GMP and uh, hygiene requirements. So all that gets covered uh, with the prerequisite programs. And as you move to FSSC, there are some additional requirements and we'll talk about the changes and the new requirements and stuff today. But there are additional changes which um, FSSC does uh, because we are, uh, um, and I'll talk about this a little later, but things like food fraud, food mitigation, uh, you know, specific requirements related to allergens, all these are added on top of the ISO. So that is how FSSC is structured. I'm not going to talk about integrity program in detail, but FSSC as an organization has an integrity program where we do a high level uh, governance of all the certifying bodies like BSI who audits you for FSSC 22000. We audit them to make sure that they do it the way it's supposed to be done. Okay, so just very briefly on that. Uh, we have a global representation across the world, like I said, uh, I'm representing them in India. And uh, I'm not going to take too much of your time, let's focus on the changes today. Uh, but uh, these slides will be shared with you. Like I said, FSSC is completely based on ISO, so whatever value ISO brings, FSSC brings in as well. But in addition, like I said, FSSC is GFSI recognized. Uh, all the um, all the multinational, all the global food companies, uh, FSSC is a uh, certification of choice for them. Uh, I spoke about integrity program, so we have some governance, um, and of course, uh, because we are we can add on requirements on to the ISO thing. Um, as new safety issues come up, as new issues come up, we integrate them into our scheme. All right. Uh, so let's get on to the main crux of today's uh, webinar. 
why has FSSC version 6 changed? So for those of you who have been certified to FSSC or know of FSSC, uh, we started way back in 2010 and then from that version, we've had constant changes. We've had version 4, 4.1, 5, 5.1, 6. So it's almost happening um, year on year. Uh, the main drivers for these changes are usually changes that happen uh, to the base standard uh, ISO in our case. So there have been changes in 2022 to the uh, 2003 requirements, which are requirements for accreditation for a certifying body. We needed to incorporate those into our standard as well. And as a responsible scheme owner, as a responsible standard, we believe that uh, we have to help organizations that choose FSSC to also meet the UN SDGs or the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, some of you might know by 2030, there are a list of sustainable goals that uh, the world has promised that they will try and achieve. So as a organization, as a foundation, we want to also contribute to the SDGs and help companies who choose FSSC to meet these. And of course, as usual, there are changes, there are amendments, there are editorial changes that you realize once you put out a scheme, uh, which needs to be updated, and it's part of continuous improvement. So basically, these are the top level things that why we needed to change the version. And uh, talking about why, now I told you why, what does these changes do? So because we have started looking at SDGs and uh, we've incorporated a requirement around food loss and waste, uh, this is a new approach, uh, and we believe that it will help companies to meet their sustainable development goals. And I'm sure all of you agree that food loss and waste is something that as companies, as individuals, as people, we need to make sure that it doesn't happen. All right, so uh, it's towards uh, meeting the goals on reducing hunger and food losses where we fit this in. Okay, um, again, uh, our understanding of uh, the food safety also brought us to a realization that you cannot totally remove quality control parameters from food safety. So the new version incorporates some of the key quality control parameters uh, that would also make food safe. Uh, so it's not everything, but there are some quality control parameters which contribute to food safety. And I'll give you examples as we go along. So that has been incorporated uh, into the new thing. Uh, we've had issues where fake certificates were being issued for FSC. So one of the change which will come with version 6 is a um, QR code which each certificate will get, which you can scan and figure out the authentic authenticity of your certificate. Uh, the world has changed. And as you know, over the last two, three years with the pandemic as well, that a lot of food that we order in or groceries that we buy is all done online. So we've got a scope extension and we've added a category called F2 for trading and brokering and like for e-commerce where you trade in food. You don't necessarily make food, but you trade in food products. So there is a scope extension there. And of course, um, we've added clarified couple of things in our standard to make it easier to implement and understand. Uh, so now let's get to the main part. Uh, so there is, if you look at the FSSE scheme documents, there is one part which is called part two, which is the part which is applicable to organizations going in for certifications. So here is where we start talking about the changes and the new requirements. Uh, so the main changes uh, uh, we'll talk about in two parts. We'll talk about what already was existing and where additional requirements have been added or they've been strengthened. And we'll talk about new requirements that have been introduced. So let's first focus on the strengthening of what, were, what was already existing as requirements. Okay, so um, now there's a, uh, we always had something on the requirement of recycled uh, packaging material as a raw material in your, uh, in, a, in your uh, work, in your supply chain. Now there's a specific clause that says you can use recycled material as your raw material input. Uh, of course, it has to meet all the legal requirements and uh, you should be able to validate and figure out what the, what the effect of this recycled material is going to be in terms of food safety. So we will strengthen this requirement. It's, it used to always exist. It has just been clarified. Similarly, on product label, <laughs> label and packaging, uh, if you're making any kind of claims on your product, on your label, you better have validation data, better have data with you 
to say that what you're putting up as a label claim really happens okay so that's that's a requirement uh, there's some uh, additional uh, strengthening on re requirements on artwork management so you have to know what you're putting on your label you, you have to have a process to approve what goes on your label as artwork uh, if you have unused uh, material printed material right lying with you how are you going to take care of it uh, there has to be a system in place for that. So these are kind of requirements that have been added around the whole packaging thing. Uh, of course, uh, food fraud and food defense was always a requirement in FSSC, but now this also has been extended to the new category of broking and trading, where I said you don't really manufacture food, but you trade and you sell it online or in e-commerce ways or as retailers. Uh, so this requirement also applies to them. Um, allergen management, always a requirement. Again, there have been a few more clarifications on allergen management, on what you put on labels, what are the kind of training that your people need to, uh, the awareness that they need to have about allergen management. Okay, so nothing different, just more clarified and added on to that uh, clause. And of course, environmental monitoring was also there in our earlier version. Uh, now there are a few more detailed requirements on how to do environmental monitoring and what is needed. And of course, there's also now a guidance document that you can refer to for clearer understanding on this. Um, again, part of what already existed, if you're using transport to bring in a, a tanker, for example, to bring in your raw material, uh, your product is coming in a tanker, then you have to have specific um, plans, specific instructions on how you manage the tanker, uh, how you clean it, what is the frequency, how do you validate it, things like that. Foreign matter management, again, always an existing requirement. Just a few more clarifications have been added to it. Also on shelf life verification, um, you no longer can just say this is my shelf life. You also need to have data to prove that that shelf life verification has happened. If you're introducing new products, new product lines, you need to verify the shelf life also. And similarly, when uh, if you're doing any ready to cook products, uh, there has to be uh, what you put as, how do you cook this product as what you put on the label, there needs to be validation of those cooking instructions. All right. Uh, so that is what was existing, just been strengthened, just been clarified. Uh, a lot of clarity is given. I'll show you where to look for this document. We have a document which shows the changes from version 5.1 to 6. It's in red font, so you can instantly figure out where the changes have come, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, you'll find it on our website. Uh, now, coming to the new requirements, um, like I said, uh, we've realized that you cannot completely separate quality from food safety. And there are some quality control parameters which also affect food safety. So we've added a specific requirement on food safety and quality culture. And we've brought in um, this thinking about quality control into food safety also where it is relevant. OK, so it doesn't mean everything in uh, like you can replace ISO 9000 or replace a quality management system. No, but there are some parameters within quality, for example, if I talk about beverages, carbonated beverages, uh, the carbonation that you add to your beverage, say a Coca-Cola or a Pepsi, it's not just to give you that tingling feeling on your tongue and taste, but it also um, helps with um, in ensuring that your food doesn't get, uh, or your beverage doesn't get spoiled easily. The carbonation makes the pH different so that there are some kinds of microbes which will not grow. And if you take that out completely, it will change and probably also make the food of course, the quality will spoil, but also make the food spoil. So there are uh, examples like this where quality control makes an effect on food safety. And those are the things that we have brought in uh, as a new requirement. There is a requirement on equipment design, hygienic equipment design. And again, these are for any new equipment that you will bring into your thing. They need to meet minimum standards. Uh, you need to know what, how the design is. You need to specify what you want in terms of hygienic design. And also, if you're making changes to existing equipment, then you need to think of um, the hygienic design. For example, if the welding is really bad, uh, well, that is uh, the place where microbes can easily find uh, a growth spot, and you don't want that. So you can probably specify how the inside of the equipment, what kind of welding should it be, how it should be smooth surface. So these are things that you need to think of, and that is another requirement that has come in uh, to the version 6. 
I mentioned food loss and food waste. Um, again, it's to meet the SDGs. And there's a new requirement on communication related to CBs. Okay, so um, I've already talked a lot about this in this slide. So I'll quickly go through it on food safety and quality culture. Again, uh, food safety culture was always there. It's not new. Quality culture has been added. And uh, it's very specific that we need to at least see communication um, about food safety and quality culture. There has to be some way of training your employees, getting their feedback, making changes based on that, and measuring performance within these defined parameters of food safety and quality culture. Okay. Quality control, I've already talked. I gave you the example of carbonation in beverages. So I'm not going to talk in much more detail about it. But uh, you need to also remember that uh, for all of you working in a food company, you know, startup and shutdown and changeover procedures are where a lot of mistakes can happen. Okay, so you have to establish and implement line startup and changeover procedures. So now this has also come in as a specific requirement uh, under our clause on quality control. It's pretty easy to understand, and I think you can also appreciate why these uh, have come up as uh, requirements. Equipment management, I already spoke about this. Uh, again, it does not, uh, if you've been using an equipment for the last 10 years or 20 years, we, it doesn't mean that you now put in specifications for that or try and prove how it was hygienically designed, no. But going forward, any new purchases, you will have to start looking at hygienic design. And uh, if you're making changes to existing equipment, you'll also have to think about this, all right? Uh, food loss and food waste, we talked about this uh, in terms of the SDGs. Uh, just a little differentiation. Uh, food loss is something that occurs before it reaches the consumer. There could be supply chain issues, you know, something got rotten, vegetables coming in, it, you know, didn't reach in time and something wasted. Those are food loss. And food waste is something that is, you know, actually good to eat, but then you consciously discard it, it's wasted. Like, you know, you take a plate full of food and then you waste it because you can't eat it. So that's the difference between food law and food, food loss and food waste. A whole guidance document is going to be released soon on food loss and food waste. And uh, what we expect with this is at least there should be a thinking and a strategy, maybe a few objectives that you can put uh, to reduce food loss uh, within your supply chains and food waste, okay? And uh, there are times when if you have excess food that you've produced, you think of giving it away to someone, you know, uh, charity and stuff. But uh, in in this clause, in this standard, when we've put it, wherever, whether it goes, uh, goes on as charity, it goes off as animal feed, maybe all of it has to meet food safety requirements and there's no compromise on the food safety aspect of it, okay? So that's something that you need to remember. There will be a lot of discussion around this. Guidance documents are on its way. So please uh, take a little time to go and familiarize yourself with this. Um, I said there's a new requirement on communicating uh, any major uh, situations that happen or any crisis events that happen within three working days to the certifying body. So if BSI has uh, certified you for FCC and some major thing, earthquake, or you know, you, you have some major uh, crime or flu flood, for example, happening, you need to notify the CB within three working days of any serious event. Okay, so. Um, if these can affect uh, food safety, then this needs to go to your CB. And of course, uh, there is a further requirement that the certifying body needs to inform FSSC of this uh, kind of serious events that happen. Uh, so these are like I've told you what was already existing and what are the new requirements. Uh, how do you get version six now? Uh, there's a 12 month window period. Um, so this FSSC version six was la launched end of March 2023. So there is one year uh, before the audits to FSSC version 6 will commence. So from 2024 April, uh, audits against version 6 will happen. Audits happening this year will still be to the old version, that's 5.1. Okay, and then from April 2024, uh, the organizations will have one year to complete it, uh, their upgrade audits. So 
from April 2024 to March uh, 31st, March 25, uh, all organizations will have that window to move in all their 5.1 certificates to version 6. Okay. Um, of course, you can always go onto a website and find uh, all this information there. So um, I'd like to just stop here and uh, I know there'll be a lot of questions. Uh, I've done a very quick overview of uh, what the version six changes are. I think we'll keep some time at the end to answer questions. Um, please go on to our website. The scheme documents are free to download there and have a look at the scheme documents. There's a document which shows the version change from 5.1 to 6 in red font. So it's very easy to figure out what has changed. And of course, uh, you can write to me or send me an email or email BSI and we'll be happy to help you. Um, over to you, uh, Aparajita. Yeah. 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 So we have the second poll question now. Uh, how do you think that FSSE version six certification will impact your organization? So kindly uh, choose one of the following options. Will it improve food safety practices? or enhance market credibility or increase consumer trust? So uh, can we have the results now? OK. So 75% people say improves food safety practices, 24 says enhance uh, market credibility, and 49 says increase consumer trust. Yeah, over to you, Smita. Okay, I guess uh, I am at the end and I think I should, uh, I'm sorry, I think my screen. Uh, are you seeing my screen, Yeah, we can see us. I'm sorry, Aparajita, I think, um, yeah. All right, so uh, I think we are at the end of my session and I'll hand it over to uh, Ramesh. Uh, these are my uh, email IDs. If you want, you can uh, please make a note of them and I'm here to help you. Thank you, Smita, yeah, for that Parajita, very quick Thank you, Smita, for yeah. that uh, very crisp and detailed presentation, yes. That was very uh, clear, uh, communicated. Well, let me try and uh, share my screen. I believe uh, you're able to see my screen. Aparajita, could you confirm? Yes, we can. Well, uh, let me take my turn here. Of course, thanks for this opportunity. I'm able to uh, put down a few slides just to summarize in terms of uh, how our current market situation is in terms of food. Uh, industries and, and uh, possible ways how BSI can support uh, in terms of uh, you know, FSSC and other possible uh, certification and other opportunities. Uh, let's take a quick look through the market outlook. Uh, what I intend to try and communicate here is to try and see, uh, of course, if you could look at this particular picture here, uh, I'm sure every one of us will agree that yes, India has a major role to play as far as uh, an agriculture producer is concerned. So we are one of the largest producer of agriculture products. Uh, we are in fact second only to China. Uh, we produce close to about 419 billion US dollars worth uh, every year. Of course, this is uh, from the statistics from the year 2020. And obviously over 21, 22, and now this year, of course, things could be only improving. However, we are um, uh, we, we cater to the needs of the country as well. And we also have the responsibility, of course, to support the needs globally. We are a large producer. I'm sure uh, you also agree that the way how uh, we, our food habits, the way how we handle foods, of course, has changed over the period. Taking you to this particular picture here, yes, I'm sure you will all say yes. We have we have changed our way of uh, what we understand as food, or, or, or uh, we are we are looking forward for a lot of convenience these days. Obviously, 57% of Indian urban uh, population is ready to pay for that convenience. 
we are ready to pay for processed food we are ready to pay for uh, frozen uh, food which is available canned foods are a popular thing these days uh, globally also of course the trend is the same about 30 percent global consumers ordering uh, more uh, kind of you know ready to eat kind of ready to cook kind of foods as well uh, of course we all have that convenience these days and we all look forward to have more of packaged frozen and canned products which are we, we expect this and the industry is poised of course it's set to a growth of like say three to four percent annually and it's ever improving at least uh, even in those difficult times we see that the industry has been continually improving on uh, processed foods that we say i would like to also take you through another kind of an understanding here on what are the challenges that we are facing in the industry as a food industry what what do you think is the problem do we have any and kind of course i'm trying to uh, highlight that we have this difficulty on brand strength i'll take you straight away to this particular uh, uh, graph here you can see that uh, when i have this uh, this is one of the summarization from the uh, federation of indian chamber of commerce and industry of course they did a recent study and they understand that yes india is uh, in terms of brand strength rated somewhere far down the line of course you could see that it is much behind countries like china south africa uh, Th turkey and many others of course uh, we are about 46th in terms of consumer preference brand strength in terms of quality so that that's where we stand of course indian products for it to be made available globally for it to be marketed for it to be sold for it to be recognized across globally of course we need uh, you know some kind of a recognition and fssc obviously fssc the, the updated version of fssc version 6 only adds to this and when it comes through a certifying agency or a certifying body like bsi which has global recognition of course that adds to the credibility of an organization of course to to uh, present yourself as an organization which is food safety conscious and kind so uh, when it uh, i had to summarize uh, the challenge is very much limited to the brand strength. I mean, because of the limited brand strength, uh, the quality concerns, you also have ethical concerns, sustainability issues and kind, uh, adulteration, all those, of course, are. So when all these things are verified by an external organization, uh, again, referring to an internationally accepted GFSI recognized FSSC kind of a scheme, it gives, yes, value to the product, value to the your organization and and uh, that that gives that extra mileage uh, when when i have to speak about bsi of course uh, bsi basically is the standards company i'm sure you all know of at least many of us have been associated with bsi so we are into standards of, of about 120 years of existence uh, we make standards of course we are one of the founder members of the International Organization for Standardization. I'm sure uh, you know what is the uh, ISO. Yes, the International Organization for Standardization. The, the very standard we are speaking about here is on ISO 22000 and additional requirements. So PSI forms a part of the founder, founder member. Uh, it represents the United Kingdom, of course, uh, and, and it's a non uh, you know, not for distributed profit kind of an organization. What I mean to say exactly is that yes, the profit which is earned by the organization has actually invested invested into the uh, industry uh, in terms of subject matter experts and kind of push to develop more standards. And and we we really work on quality different kinds of standards. Of course, starting from ISO 9001 to thousands of different standards. Of course. And for the kind of industry we are, we also have this recognition uh, by, by the Queen of England, of course, the Royal Charter recognition. Uh, anyway, of course, I'm, uh, of course, what I'm trying to say here is that we are a standards company. Since we are into standards, we make standards. We have the responsibility of sharing these standards with uh, the different organizations we associate with. We we equip organizations because we train we we. Uh, we provide consulting services, of course, to try and help organizations to implement these standards, these management systems. And in the course of action, of course, we also certify 
organizations. Of course, that's that's what we are for. Since we are into standardization, we make standards and we also go ahead and then get to the extent of even possibly certifying organizations. So we actually form a catalyst uh, to, to bring about a positive change within organizations. That's, that's the purpose of what we are for. Uh, we help our clients, of course, solve problems uh, in terms of giving advice, consulting services, of course, we, we have, uh, we, we provide anticipated regulatory requirements, our views on that. We try to help organizations understand legal uh, expectations, probably across the globe, where our products are being shipped to. Probably, yes, we need to even follow the requirements, legal requirements across the globe at the customer end. So we try helping organizations with many of these in terms of a genuine data-driven uh, uh, mechanism and uh, you know, in, terms, in terms of providing operational excellence within the organization. Uh, of course, BSI is, uh, looks forward to have uh, you know, um, the uh, organizations we support to have a resilient system in place. Of course, as the financial environment uh, uh, and, and social climate in the planet continuously keeps shifting, especially at this kind of a situation after COVID and time, uh, we see that BSI's founding purpose uh, to benefit the society is more and more relevant. It's getting more and more relevant. And we believe in this consciously, we work towards enhancing the organization's, our customers' performance in terms of very much food safety as well. So to summarize on that, uh, we provide knowledge-based solutions. As I told you, consulting, trainings, and all those, of course, uh, we provide information, legal, other information, yes, solutions for different organizations. As part of our assurance services, we provide system certifications. Uh, that's, of course, FSSC uh, with relevance to today's discussion. We also provide other kinds of certifications like PRCs. We have the uh, ISO 22000 certification, BSI, HACCP, and GMP programs. We have RSPO and all those different other certification opportunities with us. Uh, product certification, that's another interesting area. If there is an organization who wants to claim a particular, uh, make a particular claim, like say a pesticide free product, for example, uh, we will devise to create a protocol for testing and, uh, you know, as a second party uh, to try and uh, support the claim of that particular organization with a kite mark. We call it BSI kite mark. It's a product certification, which of course can be provided when it comes with an authentic uh, uh, kite mark from a company like BSI, uh, which is respected globally. Of course, training and other requirements there as part of assurance. Consulting services, we provide first, I mean, second party audits, supplier audits, you know, verification of your externally provided processes. Uh, we, we are able to give uh, consulting and other services as I told you before and help you in implementing the management system, especially here in this case, food safety management system. Just to take you through the last couple of slides I have, yes, of course, we are uh, uh, an organization present globally, about 193 countries and 128,000 different sites, of course, uh, we operate around. And uh, we have a wide range of those different sectors we would like to be, or we are working with. Of uh, course, food and retail forms a very much part of one of our priority sectors for uh, the region here, and uh, trying to help organizations to bring about more of food safety consciousness and food safety compliance within the region. Uh, of course, presence, as far as the BSI is concerned, we are about 87 different offices in about 31 countries we have offices in, and, and about 5.5 thousand people working for us. Uh, day in and out delivering audits and trainings and different kinds of other services. Our uh, clients, of course, we can refer to uh, about 193 countries where they are, just about almost every place around the globe. Every We are there in every continent, every almost every country there. Uh, Aprajita, let's take through the poll four. Sure. So, which aspect of the FSSC version 6 transition concerns you most. So you can answer by saying auditing changes, implementation changes in your organization, or training related concerns.
can we have the results now? So here, Ramesh, uh, as you can see, 10% people are saying that they have concern regarding auditing. 78% people are saying, majority of them are saying implementational changes, uh, challenges, and 12% say training. Over to you. Yes, actually, when we have uh, these new versions, there's lots of new changes happening in the standard. So there are lots to work together and, and bring about a proper implementation. Obviously, there is a challenge there. Take, taking it further, as we work around uh, with BSI, yes, as organizations, uh, let's let's try and find out how we can do uh, provide our services in kind. Yes, version six of FSSC. Uh, you all know that it's been available since the early 2023. We've got a one-year window for uh, uh, organizations to understand the expectations, implement these changes, and go in for certification. 1st of April 2024 onwards, yes, we can start delivering FSSC version 5 audits. And I'm sure uh, Smitha was also explaining that, yes, all the transition, all the companies, all the certificates who are currently certified to version 5.1, needs to be transitioned before the 31st of March 2025. So we have a one year window again there. So we should be prepared. We should be doing enough to make sure we understand the expectations. Obviously, our trainings are going to help you support this. Uh, we have provisions for carrying out readiness reviews uh, even before the uh, 1st of April 2024. So we can do readiness reviews to try and help you understand where we stand and what uh, kind of uh, you know changes uh, we have uh, whether it has been suitably implemented or kind. Yes, we can do that. Uh, and of course, we can provide you with certification trainings and certification. Of course, if you were a 5.1 certified company, obviously, then we will have to have a transition uh, from the old version to the new one starting 1st of April onwards. And I'm sure, yes, now the message is clear that all certificates has to get transitioned before the 31st of March 2025. Well, if you were a new uh, comer to the FSSC certification requirement, then obviously then we can sit together, we can work around ways of how we can try and help you in terms of having a gap assessment and try and make you understand what are the areas of, uh, you know, uh, working uh, or uh, changes you need to bring about a gap, a study to understand where you are, uh, where you need to work more closely in kind. If you were to go in for a certification, of course, certification audits are bifurcated into uh, stage one and stage two audits during the initial audit first year we can have the audits delivered and in uh, then of course assess you for uh, possibly recommending your certification and then of course the three year contract of course we can try and have surveillance audits going on with recertification and all those of course as a three year contract but that's the usual thing of course when we say uh, psi the way we could assist you as an organization we look forward to have services to be achievable. Now, achievable in terms of proper implementation. You all say some of us had this concern about uh, challenges on implementing. Uh, of course, we look forward to have a good effort, of course, a sound uh, effort towards helping organizations to have achievable management system, cost effective, and of course, supported by the various industry peers, of course. And when it comes to trainings, uh, obviously, I have to highlight some of those uh, range of opportunities where we have on those available training options. Uh, most of our tutors are now uh, qualified to deliver version 6, and we've gone through trainings and uh, assessments within our team. We can deliver the basic understanding courses on FSSC version 6. We can probably even deliver implementation sessions, internal auditor sessions for version 6. Uh, the food fraud prevention training course. Of course, BSI has developed a training specifically for vulnerability assessment. And if you look at BSI Pass 96, it's our own standard. It, it speaks about threat methodology for threat, threat assessments. That's on food defense. So we can provide trainings on that as well. Uh, version 6, implementing changes. That's another training course which is available and the lead auditor course as well, which is available. Of course, the IRCA version is yet to be announced, but over the end of this month, or probably by the early next month, we look forward to have even the IRCA recognized uh, courses available. Just in case if organizations look forward to have, you know, tailor-made, uh, customized trainings for you, maybe having two or three such courses combined together and kind, 
all those are possible. Yes, we can provide trainings for organizations. Probably the last slide I have. Yes, of course, we can then think of uh, how should we go about now. We have the various options of how having to work together and kind. Of course, we need to think about the requirement. We need to read, understand the scheme requirement, attend trainings, and understand what is this additional requirement we have. And why do why do we need that, or, or, or why, what does it actually call for that kind of a new requirement? How can I promote, or how can I demonstrate proof of complying to that requirement? As an organization, these things vary with the, within between different organizations. Obviously, we need to find out ways of how we can do that, and we break down the scheme into a clear understanding on what are the different documentation expectations. Of course, in this particular Theme. Of course, it calls for specific requirements where documented procedures are required, where it says about risk-based decisions are required, where it says about uh, you know having to document the risk assessment, verification requirements and validation. So we do a complete. We will have to work together, of course, where, where possible to complete a, a, a risk-based approach, a, a total uh, you know approach uh, to to understand and comply with the expectations of the version six of FSSC. Of course, yes, I can support. Let's go to the poll poll question five, Abhijit. Copy before yeah. we wind up. Okay. Uh, so, are you currently certified at with any other food safety standard? Please vote by saying either yes or no. Can we have the results, please? Okay, so Ramesh here, people say that 75% of them have and 25% they, do, they, do, they doesn't have. Yeah, over to you. So the 75% of uh, the population of course needs transition. And the remaining 25% probably wants to think about a uh, uh, new requirement of having uh, to meet FSSC requirements. So obviously, both of us have opportunities to work with PSI. Uh, just to summarize with the last slide, of course, PSI is into, as I told you, 193 different countries, and, and the kind of clientele what we have speaks about the uh, you know percentage of Fortune 500 companies, the FTSC 100 uh, companies we are certifying, uh, we are working with. 81% of uh, Nikkei index uh, medical device manufacturers. If you look at 53 out of 25, top 25 medical device manufacturers, we certify. And, and, and we also have some claim on the best places to work. So uh, a fantastic opportunity there is where BSI can support you as an organization to help you to, to bring about change within. And, and uh, obviously, we go to the power pool number six. So the last poll question is for you is, uh, would you like to be contacted by BSI for any of the services as we provide FSSC trainings or any other food safety training or any food safety certification? Okay, over to you, Ramesh. Great. Uh, well, if any of you want to know further about any of our services in terms of FSSC in specific or, or uh, in terms of the training we offer uh, under the FSSC banner or the browsers, the different course browsers, or any other standards for that matter, you've got those four different uh, QR codes. And uh, yeah, I will be leaving this screen uh, for any of you who want to take a scan of uh, the QR code and try and browse our web pages as well. So I would like to thank you all for being patient and listening to both of our conversations. Thank you, Smitha, for that excellent presentation earlier. Uh, and and uh, let's take it further. Uh, Aprajita, over to you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, 
uh, thank you to our speakers, Ramesh and Smita, for this insightful session. Uh, we are now continuing with the uh, Q&A session, and we have received quite a few questions. Before I uh, ask questions from you, I would like to uh, encourage our audience, if you have any questions, please type in uh, your questions on the chat box or the question box. Uh, we will address them now. So the first question uh, one of our audience have asked is any specific requirements related to food waste is uh, going to be animal feed. So any specific requirements, it is related to food waste going to the animal feed. Mata, would you like to take this one? Yeah, um, yes, uh, so if, if it is going to animal feed, it still needs to meet all the food safety requirements. So it has to still be safe food. Uh, if there are any legal requirements around what can go in animal food, food uh, as the law of the land, it needs to be met. So uh, those are that's just a simple answer on what you need to do. It should be safe food first, and it should meet the local uh, regulatory requirements. Yeah. Probably, if I can add, Sita, there was I recollect reading that there is a requirement on storage of such processed waste till such time when it is actually used in the industry. So, so there are specific requirements on, uh, on on such waste, the way how it has to be handled before it's taken yeah. to another industry. Yes, very, yeah. very yeah. good. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so uh, the next question is, um, if our organization is having ISO 22000 directly, can we go for FSSC Virgin 6 certification? Damesh, would you like to take that? Very much, very much. From the 1st of April 2020, Four onwards. Uh, of course, even before that, we can do uh, gap assessments or uh, kind of you know uh, uh, assessments other than certification. But then, if you want to go in for a certification, it has to be done post first of April 2024 onwards. Uh, I think okay. the question was whether we can go directly towards version six. Yes, first of April onwards, you can go directly to version six. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the next question is uh, environmental monitoring program for the food packaging materials. So are there any reference document other than FSSC 22000? Uh, so if you have uh, had a look at our guidance document, uh, there's an updated guidance document on environmental monitoring. Um, I would request you to have a look at it. It's uh, pretty detailed. It gives, uh, you know, how to look for uh, and how to design an environmental ma monitoring program. So, yeah, there is a guidance document available. Uh, so please check that out. It is on the FSSC website, uh, uh, fssc.com. And if you go into scheme documents, you'll also find guidance documents as a tab there where you can uh, download. Okay. Thank you, Smita. Okay, uh, next question is, um, would there be a difference in requirements or audits for manufacturers for additives and ingredients and which are not finished goods? As well? um, you want to take so it Pramish, yeah, I mean, I'll just answer and you can add on. Yeah, it's a different category when you say ingredients or additives, there are different category. And there are some specific requirements that apply to them. I mean, broadly, most of what I talked about as FSSC requirements will apply to everyone. But there are some, um, based on the category, there'll be some exclusions, some things that are added on. Um, so I don't know, Ramesh, do you want to add anything specific to category I? Yes. Apart yeah. from the ISO 2000-2018, we speak about the technical specifications and different categories. The PRPs, so yes. We have a little bit of a change in the categories we have uh, in the new version, but then based on the changed set of categories, we have technical uh, specifications as additional requirements. Uh, of course, it's different for different industries. Obviously, then that's relevant to the different categories. Okay. I'm not sure we answered their question or does it make sense to them? I, uh, I don't know. I guess uh, it does answer, but uh, uh, if it doesn't, so please, uh, I request you to please uh, get in touch with us. Uh, we would be happy to support you uh, with this question. Okay, so the next question would be uh, food safety and quality performance. 
so should it be different from the uh, food safety and quality objectives as under clause 6.2 Come back again, okay, Ramesh, please. Sure. Uh, so the person asks, uh, food safety and quality performances, should it be different from the food safety and quality objectives under clause 6.2? So performance. Uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. You can go ahead. When I, when I say when I understand performance, it's it's on the uh, the achievement of these objectives. Uh, the new standard really speaks about having to have specific food safety objectives, quality objectives. Of course, both are required. And then when it comes to performance, it's how you assess the uh, performance of these objectives. Of, of course, there should be a way how we assess, evaluate these performance. And I think if I'm not wrong, yes, there is a re need that this has to be brought into the uh, review mechanism and uh, submitted to the management reviewers. So a complete detailed requirement in terms of food safety objectives defined and quality objectives to be defined, uh, implemented, performance evaluated, and uh, applied to the top management as part of the management review. I don't know if I've understood or if I've clarified the uh, answer correctly, but then that's what I believe. Yes, the question was. Uh, just to add on to what Ramesh says, uh, yes, clause 6.2, it is aligned and in addition to 6.2 of ISO 22000 when we talk about this. And if you go to the FSSC standard, it talks about some specific requirements like the legal metrology has to be taken into account, line startup and shutdown, uh, changeover procedures have to be taken into account. So, uh, I mean, it is in alignment with ISO 22000, the clause uh, 6.2, but these are specific things which FSSC also defines uh, within the requirement where it talks about unit volume, you know, like what we say legal metrology and uh, line startup shutdown. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. So I see a lot of questions related to uh, trainings. Uh, I'm going to take just one, uh, which is quite similar to all of them. So is there any upgradation training program for LA course 526? Ramesh, would you like to take that? Upgradation is a separate course. We can have an upgradation training. Uh, as an LA, we have to have this. Uh, uh, I mean, at the moment, we have uh, opportunity there as an LA five-day LA course. Uh, maybe in the eventual run. I understand the route. I mean, the reason why this question is an upgradation of a couple of days only uh, as an LA course. We don't have it yet, but then this probably may come up. Uh, I'm not sure yet. But as of now, we have the five-day LA course, uh, IRCA approved course will be available next month onwards. Okay. okay, thank you. We still have a lot of questions, um, but uh, as we have already reached uh, four o'clock, I would like to wrap up this session. Uh, but uh, I would like to thank all of you to attend uh, who have attended this today's webinar and thank you to our speakers all the participants all the participants today will receive a recording of this webinar as well as the links to our available transition resources. However, in order to get, uh, get this great content, you must complete a post survey that will pop up as soon as you end this webinar. If you have any questions regarding this transition or any other requirements, please indicate that on the survey form and we will get back to you right away. Uh, once again, thank you so much for attending and have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.